What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for another preview, but not just any preview. It is the North London derby this weekend. Tottenham against Arsenal. Two o'clock kickoff at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium on Sunday, which promises to be a ferocious atmosphere. The fans need to be up for it. The players need to be up for it. It is our time to end Arsenal's season once and for all and get that title firmly away from, I was going to say North London, but it's pretty much South London at this point they sing north london forever before every single home game which i think is a bit um disingenuous to their fans to our fans to everyone involved in north london but look it's a big big day on sunday even regardless of the title race it's always a big game even if there's nothing on the line of course we've been mid-table um you know just trying to get a point on a point off them in uh, years gone by and there's always been a massive game, so there's always pride on the line, but this definitely means a lot. Uh, people saying this is the biggest North London derby in years. Do you reckon it's bigger than the one back a couple of years ago under Conte when we had to fight for top four? I mean, they, they, they try and make their narratives. I mean, they say it's the biggest North London derby for years, like every single time there's just something to play for. But... <laughs> um, I mean, I speak to a lot of Arsenal fans and they think the title's already gone. Uh, I don't know if they're just trying to like uh, play it down a little bit, but they are top of the league. They're going to go into this game top of the league. So is it and the biggest... City to play as well, so it's not completely gone, even if we get something out of this game. Yeah, so if it, is it the biggest North London derby in years? I'm not so sure, just because only one team essentially mm -hmm. has something to play for, in my opinion. But two years ago, it was Spurs and Arsenal going head-to-head -head for, for the same goal. Um, I think that one was a bit bigger. 100%, I agree with you. And I think um, that's always going to be bigger when we're literally going up against them and whoever won that game meant who was going to get top four. So I think that was a bit bigger. But The I prize on the line is a bit bigger this time, though, for Arsenal. Well, for Arsenal winning the Premier League, yeah, sure. But um, And they go a long way to maybe towards that goal but even if they do beat us it's not in it's still not in their hands is it um they still need city to slip up and they need um to be perfect after that so yeah um you know still lots to play for even after this game but if we can uh give them one of the daggers in their heart for their title race you know quite with a few games to go that'd be so so sweet you saw how how much it meant to everton in midweek doing the same to liverpool uh even although they obviously battling for survival uh, it meant a, it shows how teams can up their game in these kind of situations and i think we've got to take inspiration from that and make sure that we're not allowing um arsenal to play for us ex like we were allowed new uh, newcastle and fulham to play for us so easily and we just got to make sure we're really up for this game but i've got no doubt about it, we will be yeah absolutely um but look it's just don't get it twisted this game always just means so much and i really hope that Ange has drilled into the players just how much this game means and they'll know how much it means as soon as they step foot in that stadium not even step foot in that stadium but just get on the high road before the game they'll see exactly what this game means just annoying that it's two o'clock yeah um it feels in the they want to they want to decrease the drinking time don't they yeah if it was in the evening though you probably maybe i think the high would be more packed you might get a few more things don't we'll you see. worry the high road is going to be packed uh, so. <laughs> straight from 10 in the morning eight in the morning seven in the morning whatever time the pubs open there'll be fans there but look we're going to go into predicted lineup in terms of the injury news coming into this um what have we got Yes, yeah, so obviously Doggy is out for the season. He had a uh, injury in training, which means he's had to have surgery. Came out of nowhere, really. Took everyone by surprise. Um, so big shock there. But he's not going to be available for this game. Oli Skip has a minor injury, and he's going to be missing this weekend, but not thought to be too serious. And those add on to the long-term absentees of Solomon, Session, and Fraser Forster, who are not going to be seen until next season at the earliest. So... Um, some of them maybe not even ever again, but we'll see. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, that's the injury news going into this one. Yeah, Ange uh, said that Odoki's injury was an unfortunate uh, training ground incident. I mean, with the North London derby coming up, can't they just like go easy on each other just in Never. the build up to that? Like, come on. But uh, it's a massive loss for us, Destiny Odoki. But let's get into this predicted lineup. 4-3-3 uh, three, three, as per usual. In goal is going to be Vicario. And there's been a lot of debates coming into this. Who's been the better keeper this year, Vicario or David Rea? Yeah, definitely. And I think Vicario has a good uh, argument to say it's been him. I do think he's like a better shot stopper than Rea. I think Rea, that's something he can struggle at sometimes, uh, I feel like. I don't think he's the best shot stopper, especially from range. I think he gets caught out quite a bit. Right back, it was touch and go if he could make it or not. But Pedro Porro is back in the frame, as confirmed by Ange Postacoglu. 
Yeah, crucial. Uh, so important uh, to the way we play. I think he's so important to our build up as well. Um, he's going to have he's going to have a busy afternoon. He's going to have to make sure he's contributing in the final third and as well. He's going to have to make sure Martinelli or Trossard, whoever plays on the left wing, is not getting um, the joy that especially Trossard has in recent weeks. He's in great form. Trossard. Centre back. We're obviously going to look at Kuti Romero. Last time we had a big uh, London derby at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. He did lose his head a little bit, getting sent off in that four one defeat to Chelsea uh, in the very early stages of the season uh let's uh, but ever, ever since then i think he has kept his cool and he's been a standout performer for spurs so kutu romero yeah and if it's going to be kai havertz up front it's going to be very interesting that kind of battle because havertz is quite a strong um, physical player physical player um next up is mickey van der ven at left center back we all know uh, what he can bring to the game and he's just going to be imperative yeah he's going to be vital obviously i think he's going to have to help out ben davis with Bukayo saka on that side and then to make up that back four at left back for the injured injured destiny a doggy we've got ben davis at left back and that is clearly the weak link in that back four yeah he's gonna have to be he's gonna have to up his game it's a massive massive game for ben davis i'm not worried about him you know giving his all um being positionally in the right position i think defensively as well he is a good defender i'm just worried about him having to defend large uh, bits of space i'm worried about him when if he is playing that inverted role taking the ball with uh, minimal space and you know trying to progress us up the pitch and turning like uh, Udogi can uh, running up the pitch I don't think he's obviously got that in him um, but he's got to be a bit smarter which is what Davis usually is so hopefully he can really turn up in this one uh, so that's the back four in terms of the number six we are sticking with Eve Bissouma um, and I do worry for him in this game with the midfielders that he is coming up against you know the, the likes of Jorginho the likes of Declan Rice the likes of Martin Odegaard all three of them on massive form yeah and whoever we play you could give the same um, yeah. the same uh, problem with because none of our midfielders are really on the best form at the moment so that's something we're just going to have to contend with hopefully you can take inspiration of how we played at the Emirates earlier in the season and, and, and maybe watch that game back and see if we can kind of get that level of performance back because he was very good in that game and uh, really bossed it especially in that second half Next up in the number 8 we're going to look at Pape Matassar um, I don't think he's maybe performing as he was in the early stages of the season but in terms of what he can bring you, the legs he brings to midfield um, he's, he as well could be vitally important important for us yeah we think he's going to come in for Ben Tengel who just hasn't quite done it when he's coming to make up that midfield three will be James Madison who as well himself not really on the best of form but you cast your mind back to the Emirates he really you know, took authority that game, took responsibility that game, and played. What, a, what? I mean, he was one. Was he man of the match? I can't remember, but Got he was assists. absolutely brilliant. Yeah, with two assists, absolutely ruining Saka uh, for one of the goals as well. So we need him in that kind of mode this weekend. Definitely, um, it's going to be very important that. Madison is that bit of uh, adds that bit of magic to the midfield that we've been missing in recent years. You saw how important you know Odegaard can be for that Arsenal team. We need Madison to start providing those sort of moments for us, um, which in recent weeks it just hasn't really happened for him. Um, I do think it's more of a case of uh, former's temporary class is permanent with Madison. I'm sure he'll get back to it, but it hasn't quite happened recently. Um, he's going to have a big job getting away from the likes of Rice and. Uh, whoever, Jorginho or Partey, whoever they do play in the centre. Um, but he's got the quality to do it, so it's on him to step up in this game. Yeah, so a midfield three of Bissouma, Saar and Madison on the right-hand side of the attack. We are going to go for Dejan Kulisevsky. Uh, recently had a child on his birthday and uh, hopefully he can take uh, that kind of spirit into this game because he hasn't been playing well. Uh, so I think the, the main reason why we've picked him for this game is his ability to keep the ball. Yeah, and I think that's going to be so crucial against this Arsenal side. Um, also, uh, they do play um, left back. It could be Zinchenko, or uh, probably going to be Tomiyasu on that on that right hand side. And he's a strong defender, and he's someone who's going to confront you. And I, f I just feel like if Johnson's playing when when Tomiyasu's um, getting stuck into him, it's going to be a lot harder for Johnson to keep the ball. Whereas Deki can take a, can ride a few challenges and bring other players into play. So. We're thinking Decky may be spurred on by the birth of his child, could have a much better um, display as well. I thought he was a bit better against Newcastle last week, last time out when he came on as well. So we're going to go with him to start. Um, we know Decky on the right can cause some problems um, for Spurs, but hopefully in this game it can solve some as well. 
Up front in the number nine is obviously going to be Hyungmin min Son. Richarlison is back fit, as Ange Postecoglou has confirmed, but we are sticking with Hyungmin min Son uh, just to get the most lethal finisher in the Premier League close to the goal. Yeah, and the way Arsenal play, we're going to need that threat in behind. We're going to need someone who's able to stretch Arsenal. With Gabriel and Saliba being in great form, um, you need someone who at least threatens to hurt them in behind. And Richarlison doesn't quite do that. We know Son does. We Son has a great record against Arsenal. He's a great record against the top three. He scored two at the Emirates earlier in the season. Um, so I think if anyone's going to hurt Arsenal, I think it is going to be Sonny. And to make up that final 11, we are going for Brennan Johnson out on the left-hand side. He did start on the left-hand side at the Emirates, went off early, I think early in the second half due to an injury. So he gets another crack at the whip this time. Yeah, and also in our last good performance, really, or better, he started on the left against Villa. So we know he can do it. Um, yes, it's going to be... Um, difficult uh, uh, getting past Ben White in the form he's in um, but as well I also think the way Arsenal play they leave two at the back and we, if we can have a dual threat in behind of Johnson and Son looking to sc score goals in that way I think that could really help us uh, hurt Arsenal so we're thinking Johnson on the left here all right, so let's run through that lineup with you guys one more time. This is our predicted lineup to end Arsenal's title hopes. It's Vicario in goal, Pedro Porro right back, Ben Davis left back, Kuti Ribeiro and Mickey van der Ven in the centre back positions. Bissouma, Pape Matasar, James Madison filled with Dejan Kulisevsky, Brennan Johnson and Hyung Min Son up top. So that is our predicted lineup. Let us know in the comment section below. Do you agree with our lineup? If not, put your lineups in the comment section. Yeah.